Hey, I'm Jay from the Cub Scouts. Welcome back to another 60 Seconds Challenge video. And this challenge was actually recommended by a good friend of mine, and he gave me criteria for this challenge, and I'm gonna read it because I sure as hell am not gonna remember off the top of my head. He said, hey bro, I got a challenge. The mercenary challenge. You're not limited to anything or anyone in the beginning after the fallout. No scavenging at all. Only way to get more items is by trading, gambling, stealing, murdering, or any other means that present themselves other than scavenging. By the way, no limit in how quick you can get rescued. Oh, and you can't get any option of searching inside the shelter, so no searching the walls or any other shit. So those are the rules for this challenge. I'm feeling good. I hope you guys are feeling good too. We are going to get rescued using this challenge as, you know, our little handicap for getting rescued. So everybody sit down and buckle the fuck up and let's get this mercenary challenge started. Okay, so I gave this challenge a little bit of thought. And when I mean a little bit of thought, literally, I gave it about like five seconds of thinking about what I'm going to get. And I don't think I'm going to get all the family members. I'm going to get a lot of food and a lot of water since I'm not really scavenging at all. So let's grab all four of these cans of soup. Come on, run your ass over there. There we go. Okay, and I'm not going to get Mary Jane. Need the lock just in case raiders come. Boy Scout book. This, just because it's right there. And there's Dolores. Okay, Dolores. Get your ass over here. Ooh, Axe, definitely. Axe, ah, oh, damn it. I actually grabbed that food. Get the fuck out of my way, Lamp. Okay, get that axe. There we go. Oh, and there's a water right here. Boom! Okay, there we go. Damn, there's everything in my way. What the hell? Get that. Flashlight. Make sure I gotta get that. Come on, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. And that. And need another water. There we go. So I have four total waters and four food. Perfect. Make sure I get the gun. Get that gun, son! Why is it all the way back there? Get the water. Get the map. Oh shit, I'm not gonna get the radio or the med kit. Fuck me! Damn it! Ah oh, man, I forgot the radio and the med kit! Whatever, man. We'll make it work somehow. We gotta get rescued. Just have some faith in me. Let the mercenary challenge begin. I really don't know what to expect now. Because, you know, you can't control what kind of events occur in the journals. But hopefully we get to do a lot of murdering, a lot of scavenging. Ted's looking clean shaven. Dolores has her resting bitch face on fleek. We ended up getting a medkit anyway, so it worked out. Yeah, found a medkit in the shelter. Fuck yes! And I'm not gonna read the notes. You know, a lot of the comments lately have gotten a little hostile towards me. They're like, read the fucking notes or I'll kill you. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, calm down. It's just a game. I'm, I just don't want to read the notes because some of them are just, you know, miscellaneous notes that they have, like their thoughts and stuff like that. A lot of them really don't have anything to do with the game. So just calm down, guys. Calm down. It's gonna be okay, I promise. We woke up today feeling very uncomfortable. It was like, like someone or something was watching us. We could have sworn we noticed movement in the shadows. If anything besides us is alive in this bunker, it's time to teach it who's the boss around here. Uh, let's go with the axe. Whatever it was, it's dead now, quite dead. Maybe there's more hiding somewhere in one of those nasty little holes. If there's one thing we need, it's water for Dolores. If Ted doesn't drink anything, he won't last long. <laughs> That's what she said. Okay, I'm not going to send anybody out. So I'm never going to send anyone out. So I don't even think I'm going to read this or click on, you know, preparing to scavenge. So more random notes. And I was thinking of bringing Timmy down. But then I was like, what's the point? If I don't have a limit on what family members I bring, then why have to feed and give water to an extra mouth, you know? We played Ice Spy and it was pretty fun for the first three minutes. After that, everyone got bored of the letter W. Dolores will not survive without water any longer. Ted looks like he's got one foot in the grave. Nope. Peculiar. It seems that the whole shelter has been shaking every couple of minutes, and it feels like it's getting stronger every time this happens. Here it comes again, and it's way worse. It's an earthquake. Hold on to something. Well, the only thing I have is the flashlight, so everybody sit tight because it's going to be all right. Damn, a rhyme there. Makes tape coming soon, like real soon. I mean, if you feel like bursting into flames because of the fire, then yeah. Everyone okay? Let's hope so. We need to make a proper inspection. That was one nasty earthquake. We never used to get such bad ones before. It's all because of the atoms. Definitely the atoms. No one should mess with atoms. No one. Dolores will not survive without water any longer. Ted has one foot in the grave. Say no more. I got you guys. Day six. When emptying our bucket in front of the shelter, we discovered a hastily drawn map on one of the ruined walls. Someone drew out a root and marked a spot at the end of it. Maybe there are supplies hidden there? Should we check it out? Well, the criteria of the challenge is that I'm not allowed to go outside and scavenge. I can only trade, murder, or any event that isn't scavenging, so I had to say no to that one. But if it wasn't for the challenge, I think I would have went outside. 
We're not going to run around like Knights of the Round Table, following some madman scribbles on the wall. The world is crazy enough as it is. Today's been fine for Dolores thus far. Ted is fine. If they're fine, I'm fine. I'm feeling good. What's that sound? A galloping horse? We rushed to the door and were greeted by two men dressed like they'd come from a medieval fair. We identified the source of the sound. One of them was holding two rocks and hitting them against each other constantly, while the other was skipping and pretending to be a rider. They said they're looking for some antique cup, but they'd got lost and they would be most grateful if we would let them check our map, provided we have one. Okay, I'll let you check the map a little bit. Better not be doing anything suspicious or I'll whoop your monkey ass, okay? Let's see what they're up to. They seem friendly enough, so we let them have a look at our map. They thanked us and offered us some supplies in exchange. We graciously accepted and wished them luck on their quest, and they gave us a gas mask. Thank you so very much, guys. Day 14. During the night, we heard some suspicious sounds coming from behind our door. When we peeked out in the morning, we saw a leather suitcase. It has no address or name on it, but we're pretty sure it's meant for us. Should we open it? Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to open that for this challenge. I know I'm just not allowed to scavenge or anything like that, but people literally brought this to our door. So, maybe I found a little loophole in the challenge. So, I am going to check it out. Let me check the rules again. Okay, I just checked. You can't search the walls or anything inside the shelter, but this is literally just right outside. So, I'm going to check the suitcase. And if they get sick, I'll just give them the med kit. It was an honest mistake. Hopefully, I did the right thing. Yeah? What will happen? I got one water from it. Cool. Awesome. Give them some of that. And more random notes. Yeah. I felt good about that. I was kind of like, oh shit, they're going to get sick. I fucked up. People are going to get mad at me. But I did good. You did good, Jay. You did real good. What else we got here? As we were considering alternatives to their canned soup diet, a sudden knock at the door broke our line of thought. It turned out we were visited by a band of survivors who were in a pretty bad shape. All they wanted was to get something to drink, a bite to eat, or at least clean bandages and medicine to attend to their wounded. Okay, let's see how much water we have. Five and a half bottles of water, and four and a half cans of soup. Okay, that, uh, that bottle of water that we got, we're gonna give it to them. You know, just for a little bit of good karma, you never know what's gonna happen, right? Maybe, you know, these events have a domino effect into good events leading up to later in the game. You never know. Oh, they gave us a radio! Holy fucking Louia! Okay, I'm not gonna go outside. As long as we have food and water, we can stay locked in, but we'll have to leave eventually. It would be a good idea to head straight to safety instead of getting ourselves into more trouble, if that's even possible in this situation. Our hope is that our brave soldiers will come to rescue us and take us to some well-hidden, well-stocked government shelter. Yes! I have those exact same aspirations. I hope that the military comes to rescue both of you. And then maybe you can have a new Timmy and Mary Jane. But maybe better kids, because those kids seem like bastards. Good news. The government made a radio broadcast about extracting survivors from our area. The announcer asked everyone listening to wait a little while longer and expect further communication in a few days. We'll be out of here soon. Water is all Dolores wants. Ted is really thirsty. Man, you stay thirsty. Men in general, we thirsty. There's nothing more surprising than a knock on a fallout shelter door. Who could it be? Should we investigate and risk our very lives? That sounds like a good idea. Shall we open the door? Hell no! I already took a chance getting that suitcase. I am not taking another chance. Like, it's impossible in this game to get two good events in a row. It just does not happen. Like answering the door, one's gonna be bad, one's gonna be good. Just remember that, guys. Good old Jay from the Cub Scouts told you that one. The banging stopped after a while and whoever was behind the door left. We have no idea who it was. Will we ever find out? Dolores will not survive without water any longer. Ted has one foot in the grave. One more day, guys. Just hold on. Just hold on, baby. It is now day 20. Time to give them some what's up? Some soup. And ring, ring. There we were, thinking we would never hear a telephone signal again. When suddenly a phone starts ringing from somewhere outside. We figured it's the phone booth across the street. Should someone go answer it? Yes. Because I believe that answering that phone triggers the twin ending that you can get, you know, when those two girls, or not two girls, but the guy and the girl twins uh, save you and bring them to your village. We answered the phone. We could clearly hear a gasp of relief from the caller. They introduced themselves as a survivor from a nearby town of Hill Valley. We had started exchanging info when the call was cut short. Something must have gone wrong on their side. We hope they will get back to us. Oh, they'll get back to us. 
and they better save us or else because I am trying to make this a successful challenge completion. We, when we opened this bunker door this morning to let in some fresh radioactive air, we discovered a small suitcase on our doorstep. Fuck you, suitcase! Get off my doorstep! People need to stop dropping their suitcase. I don't want any of that stuff on the doorstep anymore because I am not trying to get any of these too sick before we get rescued. We have no idea who left that, and nowadays we can't trust anybody. We're not risking our lives for some supplies. They could be poison. We threw the gift away and quickly forgot about it. Today's been fine for Dolores. Ted is pretty fatigued. Aw, Ted, that's so sad. Psych! Man the fuck up! Our situation is getting worse every day. We can see the hunger and desperation in each other's eyes. We know a teacher from a local school rescued a bunch of kids when the bomb fell. We also know what kind of supplies are in the school shelter. As part of the community, we help stock it for emergency, so technically they're ours, right? Should we reclaim them in an hour of need? Uh, how much do I have? Four and four. Nah, 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 nah. I don't think I'm gonna do that. Not right now. I'm not that desperate. Th those are one of the things that I could do, though, to get food and water. I can kill those people, so that's part of the challenge, but I don't need to do that right now. We're no bandits. Sure, we need supplies, but not at the cost of others. We won't bother those people. A man who takes canned tomato soup from another is not worthy to taste that soup. Let's just hope that everybody else out there is as decent as our family. Dolores would really love something to eat. Ted is really thirsty. Dolores has not been very talkative lately. Should we chat with her and find out what's wrong? Sure, whatever. Why do we have to talk to her anyway? She always looks pissed off at the world. She's like on a lifelong period. Look at her. Look at her. Why are you so sad? Dehydrated and hungry? What about you? Dehydrated and fatigued. Eh. Talking to Dolores helped resolve some of her issues and doubts. She feels better now. Dolores has not eaten for a while. Dolores has not survived without water. Ted looks like he's got one foot in the grave. Our supplies are scarce and our morale is low. You can almost smell the desperation in the shelter. We're pretty sure there's a small group of survivors nearby. Mostly old folks from the retirement home. It shouldn't be hard to borrow some of their supplies. They're old anyway, and we need them more, right? Okay, I have four, right, still? I mean, they're old people. Come on, they're old fucks. Their time is almost up. We're doing them a favor. We're like the Grim Reaper knocking on the door. We're like, hey, you ready to come down to hell with us? All right, let's go. Boom, they're dead. We take their stuff, bada bing, bada boom. We got one can of soup. That's it for killing fucking old people, really? One can of soup? Uh, whatever, we'll give it to these guys. It's already day 25. The raider camp on our street has been especially maddening lately. They're acting like real savages. We won't stand for that. Somebody should show them that the innocent survivors of the wasteland aren't just miserable victims, and that someone should be us! Well, we're not exactly innocent anymore. We did kill some old people, even though we kind of did them a favor. I'm gonna use the axe. Hopefully it works out. They have some stuff too. Nobody get injured? Yes, nobody's injured. Cool. We performed a very tactical maneuver and sneaked towards the camp in broad daylight without any cover. It soon turned out that no such maneuver was needed. When we arrived, the bandits were fighting a group of giant mutated spiders and nobody was guarding the supplies. We picked up whatever we could and hurried back to the shelter before the raiders noticed anything. We were so brave! So brave but so dumb! A deck of cards? Really? Is that really needed for survival? You gotta be shitting me! Nobody's going outside. The more we know about what's going on outside, the better for us. Let's gather around the radio to see if we can tune into a station. Yeah! Oh man, I think this is mostly to tell us if the fallout outside is mostly gone, like if it's radioactive or it's safe to go outside. I think I think this is one, right? Um, no, wait. Once we had waded through all the static, we found a transmission that was hosted by some nut talking about conspiracies and saucer men from Mars abducting people. It was pretty amusing. Dolores has not eaten for a while. No new problems are troubling Ted this fine morning. The army is on the radio again. They said they'll be scouting the neighborhood and need to find clear signs of survivors that are still alive. We were asked to leave a few cards at the nearest bus stop to mark how many people occupied our shelter. We should get going if we want to make it before nightfall. Oh, so getting the deck of cards was actually useful after all. I'm telling you guys, like, these events domino effect when you do good things, even though I sliced up those old people, but yeah, come on guys. The cards are in place. All we need to do is wait for the army to pinpoint our location. That shouldn't take long, we hope. Dolores has not eaten for a while. Ted is really thirsty. Okay, we're almost 30 days in, so just be patient. We have plenty of distant relatives, but none of them mean as much to us as Auntie Ada. She lives in the country, so there's a good chance she's still configuring her cow counting machine and not worrying about nukes raining down on her hen house. Too bad we don't have a photo of her. Or do we? 
We put some photos into books a while ago after the giant coffee spill incident. Yeah, maybe it's in the Boy Scout book. Maybe the Boy Scout book has everything. Come on. Like, if, if the Boy Scout book can fix everything, I'm pretty sure you can find a picture or two, right? Yeah, we did. The photo we were looking for was stuck between the pages of the Scout Handbook. What a lucky coincidence. It's a bit blurry, but it's still a wonderful surprise. Dolores would really love to eat something. Ted looks like he has one foot in the grave. He always has one foot in the grave, man. Mutated rodents are attacking our supplies. Oh, mutated rodents? Always use the axe. Use the gun, and you're done, son. Just remember that rhyme, and then you'll never use the gun again. You're always gonna use the axe. Because I think the axe is, like, almost 100% successful in killing those things. Our cans are saved! Too bad for the hairy mutant. Guess we're still top of the food chain. Good for us. And it's day 30, so I'm gonna give them some of that. And more random notes. We're doing good so far. Like, I'm impressed by them not getting sick, them not getting too fatigued or crazy. And we still are doing good on food. Not the best, but we're still doing pretty good. We could really use some extra supplies. The last time we won a supply run, we noticed a damaged tank stuck in the rubble nearby. How about we send someone to investigate? Uh, this counts as scavenging. Yeah, this definitely counts as scavenging because you're looking for extra supplies in the tank. I wish I could go. Man, damn, that would be so good right now. That would be super good. But no, I can't. Oh, it's like you're having a great playthrough, but then the challenge rules, you're kind of just like handicapped. You can't do anything. We decided against going for an inspection of the tank. For all we know, it might be a trap or simply a burnt out wreck. Not worth our time and effort. Today was relatively calm for Dolores. Ted seems to be doing alright. Well, I'm doing alright because you guys are doing alright. The wasteland is full of surprises, like this man on the other side of the door knocking and claiming that he's willing to offer a lot for decent ammo. Shall we trade? Well, all I have is a checkerboard and usually when I give it to them, they just take it and don't give me anything back. So that would just be like giving him my checkerboard. Who knows, traders might come and the checkerboard might give something valuable. So we'll see. We could tell the stranger was disappointed, but that was none of our business. If ever was a time to get used to life being disappointing, the end of the world is probably it. Dol Dolores has not eaten for a while. Ted should drink something soon. Couple more days, ladies and gents. Oh, finally, a trader! Someone paid us a visit today. It was an overly cheerful red-haired woman accompanied by a grumpy looking mercenary type who was probably her guard. She told us she was a traitor and eagerly showed us the item she would brought along. Okay, I am not giving you my axe, my med kit, or my radio, but let's see what the checkerboard gives. She offers ammo for the checkerboard. Are you shitting me? Oh, she offers the suitcase for the med kit, bug spray for the axe, water for the radio. That is a horrible trade-off. You know what? I'd rather have the ammo than the checkerboard. Let's do it. I don't know why. I don't really know the specific reason why I prefer the ammo over the checkerboard. But just bear with me, guys. It, maybe if that bath event comes, I believe the ammo is the best way to, like, take off the smell from you so you don't, um, get, uh, sick from it. And one more day till I feed them. We discussed everything we could and no one is willing to chat anymore. The silence is really disturbing. We should do something before we start talking to ourselves instead. Yes, please. God, before these guys go crazy. Once they go crazy, it's really hard to get them to come back to reality because they're so cuckoo. Ah, how fortunate we took the radio with us. We can probably listen to some music. They still play music out there, don't they? And it's day 35, so you guys are gonna get some arrios. There you go. We've been hearing a lot of noises coming from our neighborhood today. Our guess is that there was a zoo escape and the animals are stampeding up there. It might be a good chance to hunt some fresh food. Who should go outside? Okay, so this one is kind of like in the gray area of the challenge. I'm not allowed to scavenge, but it did not say anything of that I couldn't hunt or I couldn't kill uh, these zoo animals to get some food, right? So if I'm just killing them specifically and not scavenging blindly for any item I can get, then I can do this one. So we're gonna send Dolores and hopefully she brings back something good. Come on, girl. Bring me something good. Too bad we never practiced sharpshooting. Every shot we fired in the direction of those animals that looked like the two-headed cows was a miss. Let's hope we'll be on target next time. Well, that was pointless. We took some time examining our map and found it had some abnormal symbols scribbled in a few places. It appears that if someone had hidden something in the area and provided directions to it, should we send someone to investigate? No, see, that is basically scavenging. So no, I can't do any of that. But where are the twins at? Like, we answered that phone call. They're in Hill Valley. Someone needs to come rescue us, please? We're running out of water and food here. It's the army again. We thought they were near. 
but it seems something kept them away. Guess we're not leaving just yet. Their broadcast was concluded with a request for assistance. They want us to take a few canisters of gas to the nearest bus stop. Apparently, they need it for their transport. That is not something we can do very quickly, so we need a gas mask to stay safe. There is no need to get sick right now before we get rescued. Yes, let's do that. I don't really remember that option coming up, usually when I play, but I believe it has. Hopefully the army comes quicker. All set. The canisters are in place and we're safely back home. Well, if you can call it that. And hopefully for not too long. We will see what happens the next few days will bring. Dolores would really love to eat something. Where's water when Ted needs it? Two more days, guys. Two more days. More random notes. It's day 40. Time to feed them and give them water. I am running out of supplies, guys. So, wait, how many days do I have left? 5, 10, 15, 20. So I have 20 more days with just the rations that I have right now. So hopefully <laughs> we get rescued soon. We have the option to kill people again for food and water, or we get Pancake. Because Pancake can go outside while he goes pee. He brings back stuff. So maybe we can get Pancake, but I highly doubt it. It's already day 41. It's hard to keep track of time down here. We can't tell if it's night or day. Our sleeping patterns are messed up. These terrible light bulbs are not helping. Too bad we can't replace them. There has to be something else we could do about this. You know what? We're already deep into, you know, the survival. It's already been 41 days. We might as well give the med kit because we got to keep them sane somehow. And look, they're beautiful as ever. Well, they're not beautiful. They're kind of ugly, but they look good. They look good for what they are. Our first aid kit was well stocked with a variety of medical supplies, including a pack of sleeping pills. We never thought we would use them, but in these conditions, it's the right thing to do. Also, it was nice change from our usual diet of tomato soup. We're all rested now and can enjoy our time in the shelter. Or can we? Dolores has not eaten for a while. Ted is fine. Yeah, Ted, you fine. You're pretty fine. You're a handsome young man. And more random notes. Great. Day 45. When we heard a knock on the door this morning, we held our breath in fear. But we soon heard children's voices coming from outside. We decided to open up. It turned out the voices belonged to a pair of Girl Scouts. They used to sell cookies, but they have branched out and now they offer other items too. Smart girls. They want to give the checkerboard for an axe and the suitcase for a padlock. The hell? Those are the dumbest girls ever. No way I would give them that stuff. You crazy. <laughs> Those girls are trying to be slick. Give me a checkerboard for an axe? Fuck out of here. Although the girls are very brave to walk around the wasteland like that, sadly they didn't have anything of interest to us, so we declined their offer. They wished us a nice day and left. Dolores has not eaten for a while. No new problems are troubling Ted this fine morning. That's bullshit, Dolores. I just gave you food yesterday. Stop being a baby bag bitch and man the fuck up. The bandit camp nearby is causing a lot of trouble. Not only are they armed, dangerous, cruel, and bloodthirsty, they're also loud and obnoxious. We respect their right to party, but not at the cost of our beauty sleep. Something needs to be done. Yes. I haven't gotten any action in a while. So I want to go to that raider camp and just slice their heads off with my axe. I mean, can you really blame me? Okay, they raided the place. Nobody was there, but they got one can of tomato soup. whoop de freaking do It's been a while, but there was another message from the military on the radio. They want us to send one person out to meet them. Sounds like some kind of precaution or a trick. We hope we know what we're getting into. Who should we send? Let's send Dolores. I mean, she's sick anyway. She is a female. Maybe they'll be a little bit nicer to us. I don't know, man. Come on. The military has got to save us, because knowing that there's a woman involved, you got you know, got to save the women and children, even though our children are barbecue chicken. We made it to the meeting. The serious-looking soldier asked us a few questions, made some notes, and told us they would get back to us. We can only hope we made a good impression. Too bad our Sunday best didn't make it through the explosion. We were glad to see Dolores come back safely from the wasteland. Dolores has not eaten for a while. Where is water when Ted needs it? Two more days, guys. Two more. More random notes. Oh man, I'm starting to get a bad feeling about this. We're running out of food, we're running out of water. Um, it's almost day 50 and there's like no sign that we're gonna get rescued anytime soon. Come on, please, somebody save us. Alarm! There's a group of people outside and they don't seem too friendly. We recognize some of them, they used to be in our neighborhood watch. They don't sound too concerned with the well-being of the neighborhood anymore. But they are very serious about angrily waving their heavy flashlights. We need to do something before they break in and take everything we have. Use the gun, son. That's the most intimidating thing that I have here. Unless we just show them Dolores' face. I mean, look how green and ugly that looks. I would think that she's like the She-Hulk or something. I'd be like, holy fuck is the She-Hulk! It's not surprising that a few shots were enough to send those cowards running. The question is, what happens if the rifle malfunctions or we use all of our ammo? Well, we don't need to know because the gun is done. Dolores has not eaten for a while and perfect. It's day 50. 
Okay, I have 10 more days worth of food. So we gotta get rescued quick. God, please, somebody save us. Day 51. So this is what it's come down to. Sitting idly in the shelter with very few supplies and a growing sense of impending doom. If only there was something we could do about it. Like breaking into our neighbor's shelter. We know the lock is broken and we saw her restocking the shelter before the bomb fell. Should we go and check it out? She and her children probably didn't even make it there, right? Right. Or maybe they are in there and we can become cannibals and eat the women and the kids. I mean, it'll give us some food, right? Come on now. Let's be real here. We got one can of soup. Good. But did we have to kill them to get it? I'm pretty sure we did have to, but whatever. No, no regrets, guys. No regrets. Ever since we jumped into our follow shelter, we've been wondering about that other door. Nope. Nope, sorry. I can't investigate anything inside the shelter or I can't scavenge, so sorry. Day 54. What we initially thought was thunder turned out to be heavy knocking on the door. Someone either hates that door or is very determined to have someone answer it. Should we open the door? Please be the military. Guys, please. Clasp your hands together. Please be the military. No! Why? <laughs> Fuck me! Why? Oh my god, that is not military attire. We opened the door expecting friendly faces. Instead, we were being tied up and forced to watch a band of raiders plunder our home. If there was ever a time when we thought our shelter is home, it was right then. These thugs didn't seem to care what happened to us, whether we lived or died. We didn't see a bright future for us. We held up for 55 days. Oh, wow. Wow, all that surviving, all that strategy, all came down to heavy knocking on a door and my dumb ass answering it. I can't believe that. Wow. That was a fun challenge, though. Like, it really made you think. You had to get all the supplies you needed. You couldn't grab some of the kids because you had to save some food because you didn't want to have to feed extra mouths. That was a pretty cool challenge. But if you guys have any challenges that are creative like that, make sure you post them in the comments below because I want to try new challenges, you know, very creative challenges, and I know you guys are some creative motherfuckers, so please leave them in the comments below. But if you guys enjoyed this video, though, please give it a like, and tell a friend today that Jay from the Cub Scouts is that dude!